Imagine if you went from feeling fine every day to feeling amazing. How would your life be different? Everyone has the ability to feel amazing again and again. You just need the right tools to get there. If you're ready to feel amazing, stick around. Now, here's the host of the I'm Not Fine Show with functional nutrition coach, Lizzie Enns. Welcome back to the I'm Not Fine Show, you guys. I'm so incredibly excited for another powerful episode today because we have an incredible and amazing special guest here with us today, oral care. We're going to talk about oral care today because... That is something that I talk about and I'm very passionate about, but I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Mon, who is a natural dentist. And one thing that I discovered about Dr. Mon here is that he's originally from Germany. My ancestors are from Germany, so we oh, have yeah. some things to talk about. But okay. doc- Dr. Mon is a trailblazer in the field of bi- bi- biological dentistry based in Phoenix, Arizona, which is actually where I go. And I've talked about this on my social and um, something that I've educated people on in the in the realm of dentistry and taking a more natural approach. So I wanted to bring you on and just dive into this subject, pick your brain and have you just pour all of this out because I think that's something that's so, so important for so mm-hmm. many people. So welcome Dr. Mont to the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Uh, and yes, I am from Germany, and I actually had an interesting journey from Germany to here. I started, my parents were in, were German engineers, and I was actually born in Milwaukee, and I don't know what possessed them at the when I was one years old to take a train from Milwaukee to New York and take a boat across the North Atlantic in April, and so that's how I ended up in Germany, and I grew up there till I was about 12 years old. Oh, and- Wow. Yeah, so I came over at the age of 12. I was the littlest kid. I didn't speak English and I had a funny name. So uh, middle school was a lot of fun for me. <laughs> Did you still speak a lot of German? Yes, I actually do. My my mom still lives in Milwaukee. And uh, when I go back to visit her, I get to use my German. You know, that's so, so interesting because the reason I have German history and my ancestors from, from uh, Germany, Swiss German, uh, we, I learned German in school because I grew up Amish and our, our first language is Pennsylvania Dutch. And then we had to learn German in school mm. when I, w- because our Bibles are German. So, but what's interesting is I have spoken that German, because that German is different than Pennsylvania Dutch. And I've spoken that German on social media. And there's so many people that are, that speak German that don't even understand it because it's such an old, old version of German. So it's always interesting to me to see who understands it and who doesn't. So, yeah, it's really... Well, next difficult. time you come in the office, we'll definitely have to speak a little German and see how much we... Because I grew up in Swabia, which is the Swabian accent is a very interesting dialect as well. And it's almost like someone from New York trying to speak with someone from like Louisiana. And if they're in their full draw, they're like, what did you just say? Yep. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so... No, that's amazing. I have to say, like your when I discovered your um dental office here in Arizona, you guys have since moved since I started like coming to your office from day one. Like I'm obsessed with that place because it was everything I had been looking for. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for creating something so amazing. And I want to dive into that like Obviously, you have a lot of experience in this field and you've done some pretty phenomenal and amazing things. Do you have, is Natural Dental Partners a franchise? No, it's it's not. Okay. Um, it probably, you know, I've thought about it because I think, boy, almost every community could really use uh, a practice like this. And I think sometimes dentists are just afraid to make changes, implement new things. And, uh, and I think it would be a cool thing to do, but right now I'm, I'm focusing on so many other things and we just built this new practice in here in North Scottsdale. And I really, it was so exciting to be able to, you know, once you had the experience to build something from the ground up, because it really lets you just kind of, I kind of call this my dental Disneyland. So we, we got really got to put everything into place and you see like behind us, like all the plants in the office, they're all real and everything. We just wanted to make a really natural, healthy place where people would just feel really comfortable. And of course, you know, our team, I think that's no matter what the facility, it really comes down still to the people that, that work here. And that's, I think, I think that's, 
people we have working here. Yeah, absolutely. I want to kind of back it up a little bit and have you walk us through sort of where you started and then what took you into the natural dental approach. So I, you know, I went to Marquette Dental School back, I graduated in 1985 and I was trained, you know, pretty much like all conventional dentists. And I placed at that time, I placed amalgams. I did root canals. I didn't really even know about any of the natural, you know, ways of doing things. But I was always the kind of person that I was always looking for a better way to do things. And so I was never happy with just the way I, I, I you know, the way I was doing things. So I was always willing to change and be open to that. Yeah. And um, it was probably around 2000, I'd already gotten into more into the cosmetic dentistry. So we were doing a lot of things metal free. So I was already trying to kind of go away from the metals, not because of health reasons, but just because of aesthetics. Yeah. And then that I started getting a lot of patients coming to my practice that heard that I would take out the amalgams and replace them with white composite fillings. Now, at that time, I didn't know how to do that safely. I didn't know that there were different materials that that composite materials could actually be toxic as well. But I was actually educated by my patients. You know, they would come in and they would bring me things about Hal Huggins and Weston A. Price. And I would just look at it and go, you know, this actually makes a lot of sense. And so I slowly, I'd, I'd actually just opened a practice that was very cosmetic based. And I literally scrapped that. And I go, this is my, this is my calling. Like once I went down that rabbit hole, you know, there's no, there's no turning back. You know how it is. Once you learn something new, it's like, no, I can't go back and do it the old way. So <laughs> I just, I just kept learning. And the cool thing was in a practice like mine, I was attracting people that thought outside the box and had that philosophy. And I learned way more in the beginning from my patients than they did for me. But it, it was a fun journey. And once I started going down that path, I just kept wanting to learn more. That is so incredibly amazing. And it's the same thing like within my field. Like I started with personal training and they always told me when I was in school, they're like, you're going to learn a lot of things while you're in school. But the place that you actually learn the most is on the floor. And yeah. I love that you shared that because that is an out of the box thinking. Like if we, if we can come in and it's what makes you such a great dentist too, is because you are not just going by what the book says and like what you've been taught. Like you're also looking at your patients on a one-on-one -on -one basis and like the feedback they're giving you. And that's what makes a good doctor. And, yeah, and, um, and you have to be maybe. willing to, I mean, it, it's hard because you don't want to make mistakes, but mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, you know, there's a reason why it's called practicing. You, you sometimes learn more from your failures than you do from your successes. And uh, when I first got into this, I mean, you had to have kind of thick skin because you were doing something completely different from what all the other dentists were doing. And we did kind of have a bullseye on our back. You know, if you were a holistic dentist, they're like, well, what are you telling these patients? And and you could literally at one point in Wisconsin lose your license for telling pa patients that there was mercury in dental amalgams, which, by the way, was funny. I also got a license to practice dentistry in California. And at the same time, I could lose my license in California for not telling patients that there was mercury in dental amalgams. So there's, oh, wow. there's yeah, there's no, you know, sometimes you think there's science behind all these things, but you know, as you know, there's a lot more politics, unfortunately, than there should yeah. be in medicine. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about oral care and um, the health of the mouth. Like, what are things that people need to know? Like, if there's like top things they need to know, what are those things? Well, I think our philosophy and, you know, I think sometimes you see our little tagline says a healthy, a healthy body starts with a healthy mouth. Okay. I think one of the statements that got me into holistic dentistry, there was a German physician that said, after studying the oral systemic connection for 40 years, I, he believed that 80% of all illness was either directly or indirectly related to problems in the mouth. Mm -hmm. And I saw that statement, I said, wow, even if he's off by a lot, it still makes the mouth incredibly important. And so when you start looking, you know, you know the big things are, of course, toxic materials in our mouth, like 
Mercury is probably the biggest offender because it actually outgasses and we absorb that very readily in the mouth. Wow. A lot of other dental materials that can be quite toxic, like some of the crown materials, some of the metals, even titanium implants can be can be very toxic when they when you disrupt the protective layer and they start to corrode. Uh, so materials were a big thing. And then also um, things like oral infections. Uh, infected root canals. Uh, you know, I never even heard that that there can be these problems with root canals and not even just the conventional infections like you see that produce pus and, and redness, but these, these bacteria that are very powerful enzyme inhibiting bacteria uh, that can really have an impact on your overall health. Uh, and now I'm also discovering things like the breathing in the airway. You know, I never thought that I would have such an impact on patients' mouths by helping them sleep and breathe better. And you just start to realize like, wow, there's a lot of things that can go on above the neck that nobody's looking at. And how do you, how do, I have a question. How do you uh, help a patient sleep and breathe better with oral care stuff? I'm very well, curious. That's that's my new rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, I like rabbit holes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was actually it was funny at the time I was still practicing in Wisconsin and I was down here actually down in Mesa and I it was an unrelated to sleep kind of conference but there was a dentist who told me that his daughter had she had problem with gaining weight she couldn't sleep she was doing poorly in school. She didn't have any friends and he started researching this and he goes, I helped her with her sleep and breathing. And all of a sudden her whole life changed. And I just remember coming back from that conference that that really stuck in my head. And yeah. I spent a lot of years researching the whole sleep breathing health connection, but everything I studied was always, it was always a band-aid approach. Nobody was really fixing the problem. And then Finally, about two, three years ago, I studied with a gentleman by the name of Ted Belfour, who invented a, a um, oral appliance that completely, it's actually an epigenetic appliance. It actually changes how your, it remodels your, it, essentially it replaces hard food in the diet. So it, re, it remodels the upper jaw, it tones the muscles that support the airway, and the big thing it was it down regulates the autonomic nervous system. And so all of a sudden, yeah, it is, I go really this, and it was such a hallelujah moment because I'd spent so many years studying this and, and I had just started with that. And I read James Nestor's book breath. And okay. I was so upset when I read that book and I go, really, I just spent 10 years studying at all of these institutes, spent thousands of dollars. And I just read a book written by a journalist and I learned more about airway. But the cool thing about him is he looked for the why. He wanted to know why do we have these problems? Why do, we, yeah. you know, why do kids need their, why do they all need braces? Why do they all not have enough room for their wisdom teeth? Our teeth haven't gotten any bigger. So the question is why have our jaws gotten smaller? And that is phenomenal. It It is, uh, you know, I moved down here. I was actually going to kind of retire. And and it's like, people go, weren't you going to retire? I said, yeah, no, that I'm, I'm actually more excited now than I ever have been about what I'm doing, which is cool to be at a point, you know, after 40 years of being in dentistry to still, you know, have something that you find that can have such an impact on yeah. patients' lives. Well, when you find your passion and the things that you really like, you, it's not even work for you because you're just passionate about it. So retiring would be boring for you because you're an out of the box thinker and out of the box thinkers don't usually retire very early. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm actually so, happy that my practice is closer to my house because our other practice was so small. I could only go in literally every other week. Yeah. You guys moved like further away from me. I'm like, what'd you guys do? No, uh, I'm over there. It's awesome. <clears throat> um, yeah, we, so we have no, to go I do really enjoy I do really enjoy coming to work and it's it's something uh you know that I actually missed as soon as I couldn't come to work as much as I've wanted I'm like man I got to do a bigger office so I can come to work every day 
<laughs> That's awesome. So we have to go to our first break here. Um, but when we come back, we're going to continue to dive into the, this journey of oral health care. And, uh, and I'm really, really intrigued by this whole sleep thing. So I want to continue to talk about that. But I also want to talk about the microbiome of of the mouth and what that should look like and things that people can do as well. So guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. We often get used to just feeling fine instead of reaching to feel excellent or even good. Wellness is about feeling good. And that is a journey of continually coming back to what is nourishing and healing for us. Your body is functional and ever-changing, like a pendulum swinging. We must learn how to move with our bodies. Tuning into I'm Not Fine with functional nutrition coach Lizzie Enns will provide you with simple but effective tools that you can use right away so you can go from feeling just fine to feeling amazing. Listen for I'm Not Fine on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and 12 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspirechoicesnetwork.com. This is I'm Not Fine with Lizzie Enns. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to lizzie at undietyourself.live. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. We are having a phenomenal conversation here. And I also want people to be able to reach out if you're local. Are you guys anywhere else other than Arizona, Dr. Mon? No, we're just, um, we're just, just in, in Arizona. Just yeah. in Arizona. So if you yeah. are local in Arizona, you can look up Natural Dental Partners. They're in Scottsdale, Arizona. Absolutely phenomenal. Everyone is so amazing there. And you want to have more of a natural approach to your oral care, please go find them there. You can also look up their website, naturaldentalpartners.com. I believe that's what the website is, right? It's actually my natural dentist. My natural dentist. I love that. I love that. Amazing. And, and there, are, there are actually some pretty good resources for people. There's an org organization called IAOMT. Uh, and if you go on there, they have a find a provider. And if you put in your zip code, it'll search by zip code and find people who have a similar philosophy to what we awesome. have here. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I want to dive into, I want you to share a little bit about what is the difference between a uh, conventional dentist approach and the way that you approach it? Yeah. So, you know, the big thing is really that we look at how problems in the head and neck area and in the mouth affect the rest of the body. And they kind of call that the focal infection theory that, you know, something like an infected root canal could affect your overall health. And that was pretty much, you know, poo-pooed by the general dental community for a lot of years. Wow. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago when they started talking about periodontal disease, you know, gum disease, how that impacts the overall health. All of a sudden they started talking about how that could cause an increase in cardiovascular disease, in diabetes, low weight birth babies. So that kind of opened the door a little bit for dentistry to say, yeah, you know, what happens in the mouth actually can affect the rest of the body. But we put, that's, that's a very small part of the impact that the mouth has on the overall health. But I'm at least hopeful that it kind of opens the, the door a crack for dentists to say, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe we should be more than tooth mechanics. But we really look at all of the things that we were talking about earlier, whether it's you know toxic dental products, whether it's infections, whether it's uh, breathing, whether it's gum disease. So we look at all of those things and say, how can we how can we get rid of those so that the other things that you're doing for your health become more effective? 
Amazing. Yeah. I always tell people like I work with a lot of clients in the functional field and the thing that I teach them is like your digestion starts in the mouth and the health of your mouth is everything for your digestion downstream mm -hmm. from there. It really, yeah. really matters. I was thinking about, you know, just even sinus sinuses and, and ear infections. Like my son, I have a five-year-old and when he was two, like he's a healthy baby, but mm -hmm. when he was two, he started having ear infections and it would happen when he would go to the pool. And then the next day he would have an ear infection. And I'd go, I, I started to question like, why is this happening? Like, this is so strange. And it made me think there was a drainage problem that was going on. I, it was so bad one night that I had to take him to urgent care at like 1 a.m. Because I, his fever was so high and I just couldn't get it. So they said that it was all hanging out behind his ear and he wasn't draining. Okay. So I ended up um, taking him to, I can't remember what kind of doctor it was, but I took him to some kind of doctor and said, hey, I think that he ha he has a really, really tight upper lip and like a lip tie. And mm -hmm. I said, I really think that that might be the problem to his drainage issue because it like changes everything. And a couple of people were like, no, I don't think so. And um, I was like, I don't really care if you believe that or not, but I believe it. And so it, I know that it also affects other things. And so I ended up having his lip tie removed and he has not had one ear infection since. Yeah, there's, um, you know, the, if he had the lip tie, he may have also had, did he also have a tongue tie as well? He has a little bit of a tongue tie, but we didn't do that one because it wasn't massive. And I was like, you know what, let's just do the lip tie for now. And if it's a reoccurring problem and it keeps coming back, then we'll do the lip. But I, I just did the, the lip and he has been fine. Yeah, no, that's, there, there are definitely a lot of relationships from, you know, of all those things What uh, to, uh, and I don't necessarily know specifically if that lip tie is related to that, but you know, it's certainly, uh, it, it, it does make sense at, at a lot of different levels for knowing what I know now about how yeah. tongue ties and, and other structures like that affect, uh, like how you chew and, and the connection between the sinuses and the nasal and oral pharynx. So that could definitely, and the eustachian tubes, of course. So yeah, those, those are, yeah. they're all related. Uh, that was something. interesting because as soon as they, they released his lip tie, he actually started draining from his nose. Interesting. Yeah, it was very, well, very inter interesting to observe. That, you know, that's all fascia. And even though it doesn't, it looks like just this tiny little piece of tissue, uh, we started doing more uh, lip and tongue tie releases. And we started having patients coming back, just telling the craziest stories, like of different things that were happening. They could do yoga poses they couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so my my treatment coordinator said, we're sitting there in a consult one day. She said, yeah, I had my tongue tie released by Dr. Shaw. And she said, my lower back pain of 20 years went away. And what? I said, well, I said, you know, I've got a tongue tie. Maybe I should get my tongue tie released because I'd had this shoulder pain for literally 10 years. I'd spent thousands of dollars. I had cupping, acupuncture, physical therapy, you name it. I tried everything. So I get in the chair, Dr. Shaw releases my tongue tie. I get up and I go, okay, you've got to be kidding me. Like this couldn't possibly work this quickly. The next day, I would say that pain that had been a chronic six or seven was maybe a one. And I and wow. it was one of those things where if I hadn't experienced it on myself, I would yeah. have said, it's impossible to just snip that little tongue tie and have your shoulder pain go away. But it shows that fascia is all connected in that fascia can put a lot of stress you know literally all the way down to your toes yeah I had uh I had Dr. Shaw release mine and I didn't even know I had one but I was in one day and she's like oh you have a you have an upper lip tie and I knew that there was something because I I because structurally I was I was aware but I didn't realize it was a lip tie and, yeah. and so she released it the same day and we did side by side photos of how different it made my face look like completely changed the bottom part of my face and I've seen uh put pictures side by side from before I released it to now and people are like did you do work on your face and I'm like I released the lip tie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and it's it's just phenomenal but it is like i do think that you know lip ties and tongue ties are a huge thing that affect our health in a way that we most of the time aren't even aware of until we are aware of and it's well, and you're the, the tongue ties really are such a huge contributing factor to uh a child's well-being because a lot of those kids with with tongue ties have a difficult time latching on to breastfeed. Yep. And as much as I was always a fan of breastfeeding for the nutrition in the mother's milk, it wasn't until I got into airway and treating those problems that I realized that it's the physical act of breastfeeding that's really like an orthopedic development for a child's face to develop all the structures of the airway. And so when kids can't breastfeed, it starts them on the path of having underdeveloped jaws, which gives them crowding. And of course, unfortunately, most orthodontists until at least more recently just started pulling teeth. Or it's like, well, you have crowded teeth. I guess you don't have enough room. So let's pull a couple of teeth. And so they're scrunching everything together and making a bad problem even worse. And so we want to, you know, now orthodontists are at least more of them are becoming aware that we should be expanding and giving more room for kids to breathe. But once all the, you know, all these problems with ADHD and, and all those things, we're now finding they're all really sleep related. Like, how do you expect a child that's been battling to breathe all night and not been sleeping and getting restored of sleep? Now they're supposed to go to school in the morning and sit, you know, at a desk at eight o'clock in the morning and learn math. I mean, you know, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, it's absolutely not. Do you think that if a baby is not able to breastfeed, whether it's a structural thing and, and it's just not happening, or maybe the mom doesn't have the milk to do that. Do you think that that is what then later on creates the structural of the mouse where they have crowding of the teeth <laughs> and the sleep issues and stuff? Oh, abs absolutely. It's, it's probably one of the, the primary factor. And so once I started treating airway in adults, I very quickly realized, wait a minute, this problem didn't just start a year or two ago. You know, this person has been battling this since childhood. And, and that's why we have Dr. I don't know if you've met Dr. Kristen in the office. She actually uh, joined our practice to do healthy start for, for kids. And what they are is they're habit correctors. So what we do is they she puts in these uh, these little oral appliances that retrain the muscles so that these young kids can get that you know at least get some of that development that they need, and a Healthy Start has done I believe over four million of these cases, and over ninety percent of the kids end up not needing braces oh. because there's a why to why they need braces. You know they don't have the they don't have the room, and it's all because of of the muscles not doing their job, especially especially the tongue. The tongue is an orthodontic appliance. Every time you swallow, your tongue is supposed to go on the roof of your mouth and push outwards. So if when you're swallowing, if your lips and cheeks are pushing in and you don't have a tongue pushing out, guess where the teeth are going to go? The, the, you're yeah. literally doing you're literally doing orthodontics on yourself to, to scrunch up those teeth. So what if we can retrain those muscles to actually move the teeth back out into the right direction? And it probably uh, changes just things structurally on their face too. I mean, I can imagine like if a kid is having those issues and they do the training and they get the help with that, I, I could just imagine a before and after of what their face even looks like because they're, <laughs> you know, reconstructing, but they're doing things in a natural way. I do remember yeah. having this conversation with Dr. Shaw um, about my kiddo and whether or not he needs it. So that's, absolutely phenomenal yeah. what what like amazing insight no it's it's such i think it's the greatest you know gift you can give your child to to have to have your child being able to properly breathe and and get the oxygen they need i mean what's what's the most of all the nutritional things we take in i mean what's more important than oxygen right uh <laughs> so and it, it to me, you know, I love oxygen and oxygen therapies, and we do ozone here in the office because I just feel like it's I it's didn't know that. it's so simple yet it's so incredibly powerful. Yeah, absolutely, that is absolutely amazing. So we got to go to our next break here, but when we come back, we're gonna continue to talk about this. I want to dive into a little bit more on the microbiome of 
the mouth as well. And then I want to talk a little bit about products to use as well, because that is a massive, massive. Uh, and I know I use the same products that you guys promote at the office, but we can talk about that too, because it's life changing. So guys, don't go anywhere. I'm Lizzie Enns, your host on the I'm Not Fine show on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back after the break. We often get used to just feeling fine instead of reaching to feel excellent or even good. Wellness is about feeling good. And that is a journey of continually coming back to what is nourishing and healing for us. Your body is functional and ever-changing, like a pendulum swinging. We must learn how to move with our bodies. Tuning into I'm Not Fine with functional nutrition coach Lizzie Enns will provide you with simple but effective tools that you can use right away so you can go from feeling just fine to feeling amazing. Listen for I'm Not Fine on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and 12 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is I'm Not Fine with Lizzie Enns. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to lizzie at undietyourself.live. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. We are about to get into the microbiome of the mouth, which is one of my favorite topics. But before <laughs> I even go there, I want to mention this before we get to the end of the show. If you are local and you're looking for a more natural approach, Natural Dental Partners did give a gift for this show. And I want to announce that before we get to the end. And so if you want to go in, schedule an appointment with them, the first thing you're going to do is call 602-775-5120 to schedule. And you're going to mention my name when you call in. You're going to get a $49 new patient exam, including 3D imaging, full exam, and consultations. And then new patients also leave with an oral care kit that includes the rice well, toothpaste, toothbrush, and floss. So wanted to throw that in there before we get to the end, because I think that that is absolutely phenomenal. And thank you for doing that for our listeners, because the more people we can help get a healthier mouth, the better. So let's get into the microbiome of <laughs> mouth. Take it away. Well, you know, when we when we think about microbiome, we're really thinking about mainly in terms of the biofilm that mm -hmm. forms on teeth. And that would be like that plaque that when you wake up in the morning and you feel like, you know, your teeth have little sweaters on them. Uh, that's actually the, um, a it's actually a multiple layers of bacteria because the bacteria in the mouth are actually what are called anaerobes. So they live in the absence of oxygen. So in order for plaque to kind of do its damage, it's not an individual organisms because they can't even really survive well, even in the oral environment. So they, they're literally layers and layers of bacteria, of dead bacteria. And it's really the layer at the bottom that are protected by the bacteria up above, not just from oxygen, but also from sugar. You know, if you think about sugar, actually kills bacteria, especially high concentrations. That's why we use it in preserves. That's why things like honey don't, don't spoil. Uh, so you can actually kill bacteria with sugar. So the plaque layer creates this gradient. So you have high concentrations. So as it kind of filters down, you get the proper concentration of sugar where these bacteria at the tooth level can thrive. So when we're doing when we're doing home care and and cleaning our teeth, we're really not necessarily having to remove all these bacteria. We're really trying to break up that biofilm. Mm -hmm. And just by doing that, whether it's by flossing or brushing, 
you're you're basically rendering those bacteria ineffective. And so the biggest thing about oral care products, it's really, you know, it's obviously a multi-billion dollar industry that gets us to believe that we need all of these products. But, if, you know, if you think about if, you know, if you've studied things like uh, like Weston A. Price, yep. you know, he went to these, you know, quote unquote, primitive societies, which appear to be much smarter than <laughs> we are sometimes. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, they, they didn't have dentists, they didn't have floss, they didn't have toothbrushes, but they all had perfect jaws and perfect teeth. Yep. And so really a lot of our oral health doesn't depend on what product we use. Um, it's actually really interesting. I probably right around 2000 is when I switched from having a conventional practice to a holistic practice. Okay. And so I used to do on patients, every patient would, would come in, I would do the full exam and I would do a treatment plan for their restorative work, you know, their, whether there's cavities, old amalgams. And then I would also do a treatment plan for the gum disease that they had. And probably about 80% of the patients that came in had some form of gum disease, whether it was just basic gingivitis or more advanced gum disease where they have the pockets around the teeth. And so almost every single patient got these two treatment plans. And I got into the holistic dentistry and a little ways down the road, I go, you know, it's really weird. I'm not doing treatment plans for gum disease anymore, or very, very rarely. In most cases, it was probably more due to some restorations that were defective, that were leaking, that were creating like an environment that just couldn't be kept clean. And so, you know, I always would ask people, well, how often, how often do you brush? And they all said twice a day, no matter whether it was pre or, you know, after I saw the holistic patients and how often do you floss? Well, you know, they all get that look like, well, not as often as I should, which, you know, could mean just about anything. <laughs> My joke is that for women, it means every other day for men, it means every other year. Uh, yeah. But I thought it was so interesting. So I just kind of kept thinking about this and it really turned out the the biggest difference was the patients that I was seeing now had a much different diet and they were much more conscious about what they were eating. Uh so the, the truth is, I mean, we love all the products to make our brush, uh, you know, breath feel fresh uh, and things like that. But the truth is, if you just took a toothbrush and moistened it and did a good job of going around and breaking up the biofilm and ate a good diet, you would have an extremely healthy mouth. Uh, so we still like to, you know, we still like to offer products to our patients that help remineralize uh, cavities, like the, the Risewell toothpaste is one of them. And of course, you know, and I don't know if your listeners know or not, but we, you know, in a practice like ours, we try to avoid any fluoridated products. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so there are now other products like uh, hydroxyapatite that help remineralize uh, at least cavities that are starting and prevent future, make the teeth stronger. Yeah, it's that that product is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I got introduced to it because of Dr. Shaw because I told her I can't whiten my teeth because they just hurt so bad when I do. Mm -hmm. Like they were so sensitive. I didn't have any other issues with them for from a sensitivity standpoint. But when I started taking the product, or when she introduced me to the toothpaste, she's like, "Hey, you need to remineralize your teeth." And that was the first time I ever heard about it. So I started using the Ricewell toothpaste, and have never had sensitive teeth since. Now I have a pretty healthy mouth. I have such a healthy mouth that they skipped my last X-ray because they're like, "You don't even need to do an X-ray. <laughs> You're fine." So that's like that's phenomenal. But I also eat pretty healthy. So I I do a hundred percent agree with you. Like if you use a product that remineralizes your teeth, that is at least one thing that you're doing. But the most important part is what you're eating and drinking. One thousand yes. um, percent. And I think that that's a testament to the kids and kids getting, getting cavities is just horrendous. So you definitely want to avoid that. But I have some pretty phenomenal stories from clients and customers of mine that are using the Risewell products. And, you know, I had a client that was like, Hey, I need to have root canals and she had gum disease. And so she, I introduced this product to her. She started taking it. She's already eating healthy. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, she went back to the dentist two months later and the dentist looked at her mouth and he's like, you don't need any treatment on anything. Everything is like healed up. You're good to go. So, and that's just one story. I'm not going to promise that teeth that potentially need root canals are going to, you know, get reversed from. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if it was a refill or what it was. It had something to do. First of all, it was the gum disease that she, mm -hmm. she didn't have any receding gum anymore. Yeah. But they didn't do have to do the treatment on the tooth that they thought that they had to. So um, it's pretty phenomenal what it can do. I want to touch a little bit on fluoride because there are still people that 1000% believe that you need fluoride in your mouth. Touch on fluoride for us. Oh, boy, I could probably spend a whole day talking about fluoride. I I, back I when I practiced in Wisconsin, this community just north of me uh, just north of Milwaukee, asked me to come and speak. They were having a debate about whether or not to fluoridate the water. And I'm like, oh yeah, sure. I'll, you know, I'll speak about fluoride. I'm a dentist. I know about fluoride. Well, I started doing some research and I thought, boy, I have no clue about really what's going on with fluoride. And so th there's, there's been a lot of deception in the fluoride industry. Uh, the fluoride, topical fluoride can potentially have some benefits. It does replace uh, part of the tooth and make a tooth, you know, supposedly more acid resistant. But ingesting fluoride, there's actually never been a study that shows that ingesting fluoride does any any good. And on the on if, if anything, there are a lot more studies that show, you know, re, uh, lower IQ, a bone cancer. There are all kinds of uh, you know, potential problems with ingesting fluoride. So the big study that they always told us about was it was actually in Michigan. Grand Rapids was the, the city that was fluoridated. And I believe it was Muskegon was the control city. This was supposed to be a 10 year study back in the early fifties. And so after three years, they discontinued the study and they said, look, there's been a 70% drop in the rate of decay in the city we fluoridated. And everybody went, hallelujah, this is great. Let's fluoridate the water. Well, it wasn't until years afterwards, you know, when they release all of the information that they that they showed that, wait a minute, the city that wasn't fluoridated had the identical drop in the rate of decay. So that kind of makes you go, well, maybe it wasn't the fluoride. And it was actually, it turned out that back in the early 50s was when Colgate first started advertising uh, about oral care, we like we didn't even know back in those days what exactly caused gum disease or what caused cavities, and um, and so we basically just have been using information like that to say, yeah, fluoridation, you know, fluoridation works, and they've kind of suppressed a lot of that information because, you know, obviously companies like Colgate and and Crest, and actually that was part of their jingle. So if you ever wondered why you go to see the dentist twice a year, it was from a Colgate jingle. It was a commercial jingle and see your dentist twice a year. So that's the science behind seeing your dentist <laughs> twice a year. <laughs> um, um, that so is that's why, you know, and that's why there, there are just so many better alternatives. And I, I do really believe fluoride is a toxic pro you know, product that, that, doesn't have a place and just isn't needed because we have we have better alternatives available to us. Yeah. I I agree with that. I one of the questions that I always ask my my audience and my customers is have you used Sensodyne for sensitive teeth? Yes. Do you still have sensitive teeth? Yes. Do you still get cavities when you use a toothpaste or a tooth product that claims to get rid of cavities or whatever? Yes. Okay, question the narrative. What's wrong here? It's <laughs> all in the marketing. Like you, 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 just because they're saying and marketing in that way doesn't mean it's the truth. And you have to get to this place of questioning things. Yeah. And us Germans like to do that. We like, we like <laughs> to like go against what everybody else says and say, nah, I don't really believe that. Let me, let me do my own thing over here. And that's the thing that, that, we have to be able to look at something and go, okay, but is it true? Or is it just what the mass uh, 
the the mass community is saying that is yeah. that is that is true in marketing. Well, so it's marketing. Know. You know, it's you know, I mean, we've kind of seen that over the last few years. You know, the the you know the joke is you know follow the money and you'll find the science, and and that's kind of you know true in this case as well. And with fluoride, I think it actually in some cases made things worse because people got almost this false sense of security. They're like, yeah. oh well, you know what? I'm getting the fluoride treatment. I'm using fluoridated toothpaste. I can kind of put whatever you know crap I want in my mouth and I'll be okay. And that obviously. You know, what they promised years ago was, oh, we're going to use this fluoride to eradicate dental decay. And that certainly has not been the case. No, has absolutely not been the case. So we have to go to our last break here. I want you to think about what some, uh, a handful of things, like five things, whatever steps that, that you can think of, that would be a start for people. Like what are the most important things that people need to start with? So when we come back, we're going to give those steps so that you guys can walk away with some actionable steps to put in place for yourself and your oral care. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. We often get used to just feeling fine instead of reaching to feel excellent or even good. Wellness is about feeling good. And that is a journey of continually coming back to what is nourishing and healing for us. Your body is functional <laughs> and ever-changing, like a pendulum swinging. We must learn how to move with our bodies. Tuning into I'm Not Fine with functional nutrition coach Lizzie Enns will provide you with simple but effective tools that you can use right away so you can go from feeling just fine to feeling amazing. Listen for I'm Not Fine on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and 12 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is I'm Not Fine with Lizzie Enns. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to lizzie at undietyourself.live. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. We are going to finish this show out today with some actionable steps for you. First of all, I just want to thank you so, so much, Dr. Mon, for coming on here. What an amazing conversation and so much knowledge in one episode it's it's going to change so many people's lives i just know that um lastly i want to tell you guys if you have not tried or heard of the rice well toothpaste uh, they have toothpaste different types of mineral toothpaste they have toothbrushes they have floss and they have mouthwash they even have a kit's toothpaste and if you're not local and going to dr mon's dentist office go to ricewell.com you can order stuff right there. And if you put in code Lizzie 10, you're going to get 10% off your order. So that's my gift to you. Um, and now back to you, Dr. Mon. Let's uh, talk about what some things are, most important things are that people need to be doing or starting out with. Well, I, I you know, I think you've already kind of, we've touched on them already uh, over the course of the show. So I think, you know, the first thing is obviously, you know, making sure that your diet isn't filled with refined sugars and and paying attention to your diet and and maybe even eating foods that are high in probiotics. You know, as Germans, we love our sauerkraut, right? So, you know, everybody <laughs> needs a little sauerkraut in their diet. Uh, and so I think I think that's probably just from my experience and what I've seen with people, they can sometimes if they do that, it's amazing like how many other things you can get away with if you if you eat a good diet, uh, then then you don't already mess up that microbiome in your mouth by feeding them by feeding the harmful bacteria all this sugar. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the other thing is about oral care. It's not necessarily about, you know, people want to use all of these, these strong mouthwashes and kill bacteria. And, you know, that can be, as you know, that can be, it's always the balance between the good and the bad. And when you're going in there and trying to kill everything, you're, you're wiping everything out. And usually it seems like the bad bacteria get the upper hand when, when thing, things come back. Uh, and the bacteria are so uh, important also you know, getting back to the airway thing, they produce nitric oxide in your, uh, that lower your, your, your blood pressure and dilate your blood vessels. So it helps you with oxygen, oxygen absorption. So uh, doing things like, like that are really important. Uh, not, not just saying I need to, you know, switch with, switch with Listerine four times a day to keep you my know mouth. 
I'm so glad that you brought up Listerine because I <laughs> actually, I listened to a doctor talk about this where they did studies and I'm curious your thoughts on this, but he said that they've, they've um, done a study on Listerine and for people that use consistently use Listerine all the time and they've seen that it can actually affect the blood pressure. Have you it's, seen that? It's maybe one of the worst mouthwashes that you can put in your mouth just because there's a lot of bad bad things in there besides the fact that it's uh somewhere between 30 and 35 percent alcohol so it it actually dries out your oral membranes and even though it may make your breath better for maybe you know 15 20 minutes because you're drying out your oral membranes your breath actually gets worse you know 45 minutes an hour down the road and it can actually lead to you know it can actually lead to oral health conditions. I don't want to, you know, say anything specific, but I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put Listerine in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. I actually didn't use a mouthwash for years until, um, rice well. And some, I don't even use it every day cause I don't need it, but that's the other thing with, if you have bad breath all the time, there's a downstream issue going on. That is part of that reason as well. So bad breath is not everybody wakes up with bad breath in the morning. <laughs> that's, that's just not the case. Um, but if that is something that that is happening to you, then it's time to look further on why that is like what's going on. So don't use Listerine, use good oral care products, eat a healthy diet, a couple other and, things. And, and just getting back to the oral care for a second, you know, a lot of our patients use very, it really just use an oral care product that has as few ingredients as possible. Yep. We have patients that are using something as simple as baking soda that can be very effective with people just putting essential oil drops on their, you know, a little, little peppermint or spearmint oil. If you want to get that, that fresh, healthy breath, you can take a little baking soda, add a little, you know, peppermint oil, essential oil to it. And again, you're just trying to break up that that biofilm and you'll do a really, really good job of keeping your mouth healthy. Uh, the other thing that's actually really good for your oral health is oil pulling. And when I first heard about it, I wasn't quite so sure. You know, I, the way it was explained, it seemed more like a detoxification program. I'm like, how would this work? But my patients were doing it and they were coming back and their gum tissues were just phenomenally healthy. And again, it turns out that the, the coconut oil has antibacterial and antiviral properties, but again, it breaks up that biofilm and it doesn't necessarily kill the good bacteria in your mouth. And so oil pulling is actually, especially if you maybe struggle with a little bit of you know, gingivitis or some gum issues, the oil pulling is, is very effective to get your mouth healthy very quickly. Wow, that's amazing. I, I know I, I did a little bit of oil pulling back back in the day, but then, you know, I, my, my teeth are at a place where I'm like, I don't really feel like I, I need to, but I can definitely see how someone that's struggling with gingivitis and things mm -hmm. like that going on. That's actually a good reminder and something that people can implement in. So that's absolutely amazing. Um, what about hydration? How big does hydration like affect your oral well, I think I, I haven't really looked at it specifically for just for oral health, because we obviously, you know, understand that that good hydration is just, you know, a good thing in general. And then when you're, of course, when you're drinking, you're also diluting any, uh, assuming you're, 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 you know, using uh, something good to hydrate with and not drinking, you know, Gatorade or, yeah. or uh, trying to hydrate with uh, Mountain Dew, Uh then you're also diluting potentially any carbohydrates and acids that mm -hmm. that can build up in the in the mouth. Um, so I think from that standpoint, that's probably the the biggest thing that we would that I could say from hydration as far as or yeah. affecting oral health. Well, we're about to end this show here, but is there uh, one last thing that you want to share with the audience before we go? Well, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, finding someone that like our practice that shares your philosophy so that when you go in and they look at, you know, old dental amalgams or old toxic materials, they don't just go, oh, we'll just watch that. I mean, you want someone that when they do an oral assessment on you, on you that they're actually looking for the things that that are important to you. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much. I appreciate this so much. This was wonderful and amazing and educational guys. We'll be back next week 
with another powerful episode on the I'm Not Fine Show. Thank you for listening to the I'm Not Fine Show. Lizzie Ends returns Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, have the best week of your life by making choices that take you from feeling fine to feeling amazing. Thank <laughs> you.